This is a tutorial that describes how to set up the security between a Google Fusion table and an App Inventor 2 application. To understand how this security works, I'm going to draw an analogy. Let's say I was planning to take a trip to visit my father who lives in a faraway city. The added complication here is that he's not going to be there when I arrive and I need some way to get into his apartment and wait for him. What are we going to need to accomplish this? Well, first I need his physical address so I can tell the cab driver where the building is. Second, I need to bring some ID for the doorman so he lets me up to my father's apartment. Luckily, my father has already told the doorman to be expecting me. So my doorman, his doorman just needs to check to make sure that I have the right ID so he lets me in and no one else. And third, I'm going to need a key to get into my father's apartment. Luckily, my father's already mailed me a key long ago so I have no issues if I get to his door I can get in. Now if we were to draw this analogy in the Google world here's where we would get. In terms of my father's physical address in the Google world for getting at a fusion table we need an ID to ID which table we're working with. In terms of the ID I gave to the doorman to get through the door I'm gonna need a special email address. This email address is gonna be given to me by the Google Developer Console Likewise, instead of a physical key to get into my father's apartment, I'm going to need a, a key that's stored in a file with a P12 suffix. And this fusion table key is also going to be given to me by the same developer console. So let's see how these three assets are created and then stored inside our AI2 app. Okay, let's have a quick look at the uh, App Inventor 2 app here. I've got a fusion table component. Uh, which I get from the storage drawer and I have a text label. So I'm going to use the fusion table control to read the fusion table and I'm going to display the results of the table in this label. So let's go look at the blocks editor. This is my entire app. I've created a constant to hold a fusion table ID. When the screen initializes I use that fusion table ID to retrieve the information and then when the information shows up I take that entire uh, stream of information and I post it into the uh, label text. So first, let's figure out where this asset came from here, which is the Fusion Table ID. So to get that asset, I go over back to the Fusion Table. I click on File, and I say About This Table. And here we see the Fusion Table ID shows up right here. And it's a big, long, nasty string, so I'm just going to copy and paste it here. So I just copy it here. And here in the App Inventor app, if this wasn't here, I would just paste that in. And there, I've loaded my first asset. Now that we've got the table ID loaded, we're going to have to create that email address and also the key. So I'm going to come over here to this uh, website called the uh, Google Developers Console. And at this point, you might want to stop this recording and copy down this important URL. If you do any extensive work with Fusion Tables, you're going to need this a lot. So once we get here, I'm going to create a brand new project. I'm going to just say uh, tutorial. and Okay, so now the project's been created. I'm going to come over here to uh, APIs and Authorization and click on APIs. And over here, I'm going to come over here to the other popular APIs and I'm going to enable the Fusion Table API just by clicking on that. Okay, and then I need to click over here. And that will enable the Fusion Table API for this project. All right, now I'm going to come over here to Credentials. I'm going to get that key and that email address. Now you might be tempted to click here on this new key, but we're actually going to be using this uh, asset over here, this client ID. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to create a service account type client ID because I want my application to access the Google Fusion table instead of an end user. Okay, so I'm going to click on that and it's going to just take a couple of seconds for Google to create the necessary assets for us. Now Google has gone ahead and created a key. This, they've created a JSON key, which is not the kind of key we want, but that's okay. We'll just click OK over here. Now notice here that Google gives me an email address and this is important. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to install that in two separate places. Okay, so the first place I'm going to install that, I'm going to go back to my Fusion table and I'm going to click on this Share button up here and that brings up the Share page and right now you can see I'm the only person who's authorized to uh, change this table but I'm going to install that email address right here and here you have a choice. You can either give your app read-write capability or read-only capability. I'm going to just leave it here at 
read write. And since this email address is not associated with a human being, I'm going to uncheck this box. I'm going to hit send. Now Google is warning me that uh, no email is going to get sent out, but I know that's okay because that's not a human user. And uh, additionally, I like to check this uh, box here for some additional security. And now you can see that the email address associated uh, with this app has now been installed as a user of this Fusion table. Okay, so now. Uh, that's one place I need the email address stored. The other place I need to load up the email address is inside my uh, App Inventor 2 app, right here in the service account field on the properties of the Fusion Control. That's the place uh, I do that. And I'm also going to check this box, very important, so it knows that it needs to authenticate each time it accesses the Fusion table. All right, so the last asset now we need is the key. So to go back to the uh, console window for the developers, I'm going to create a P12 key. So I'm going to click on the P12 button over here. And uh, you can see that the P12 key has been created down here. And uh, there's an additional password we're going to need. So I'm going to copy that here. And then uh, I'm going to bring up this key file inside the downloads folder. So I've created some additional keys here, but this is the one that just got created. And I'm going to have to enable this key, so I'm going to double click on that file. And then I'm going to just hit next and next. And then it asks me for that password. I'm going to paste that password in. And then I'm going to sit next and next and finish. And now you can see that the, uh, uh, the key has been enabled. And that key is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that file and I'm going to install it in here. Uh, as an asset in the media drawer, okay? And so I just upload that file into here. And then I have to remember, importantly, to also enable that same file here as the key file. Notice that the API key field is left empty here, given the way we're accessing the Fusion table. All right, and now uh, as a developer, uh, we, we've installed all three assets now. Uh, as a developer, you might be tempted to guard all three of these assets for security reasons. But actually, the only one you really need to guard is this one right here, which is the, 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 the actual key. The, the other ones, you can guard them if you like, but they're, they're less important. The security on those is less important. Okay, so as a final step to our tutorial, let's run the app and see what it looks like on the emulator. To test out the app, I've added two rows of data to the uh, Fusion table. And now I'm going to run the emulator to see uh, what happens when I run the app. And uh, here I'm going to run the app. And now you can see that it's accessed the Fusion table. And here's the information. Let's look at it side by side. Here's the information on the Fusion table. And here's how it shows on the screen on the app. So there you go.